okay in the last class uh, we started talking about uh, this hypothesis testing right we introduced what is hypothesis testing and uh, we defined what is a rejection set we talked about various types of error particularly we talked about type 1 error type 2 error and uh, we define type 1 and type 2 error using your power functions okay and then discussed what should be the ideal hypothesis should look like in terms of its properties for power function okay and then uh, we discussed some examples especially about this uh, binomial case and the Gaussian case um, so what we will do today is little bit uh, discuss this example more so we said okay let's say we have a sample coming from a binomial distribution which has parameter phi and theta we could equivalently think of these are like a phi samples coming from a Bernoulli random variable with parameter theta but here I'm just taking one sample coming from a binomial which I could now we want to check whether the theta is taking value less than half or it is taking value more than half we have to decide a test here one test like you can always go with the LRT test okay or like uh, let us uh, discuss two other possible tests now since we are discussing whether theta is less than half and more than half one natural test we can think of is when more number of ones are in fact all are ones maybe that is theta greater than half otherwise it is less than half that is one possible test and that is what let us define my region R that is the region rejection region as something uh, simply one all these ones so when all ones I see I will reject it to be a null hypothesis otherwise I accept it to be a null hypothesis so this is my rejection region has just one vector in that now if I have to calculate the probability that under my theta what is that x belongs to r now x is I mean binomial but I could think of like uh, it is a Bernoulli with phi sample so this is nothing but we discussed last time this is nothing but simply probability that x1 is 1 x2 is 2 all the sorry x2 is 2 all the way up to x5 is 1 all of them has to be 1 which is because of the independent nature all of them with happen with probability theta so this is like a theta to the power 5 okay now let's compute type 1 error for this okay what is the definition of type 1 error definition of so what we basically got is this is the definition of our power function uh, what how did we denote the power function we denote it as beta of theta so this is like a beta of theta okay so let's plot it my theta is going to take value obviously between 0 to 1 and this is my beta of theta okay now how does theta to the power phi look like that is some polynomial 
curve. Let's say it starts from 0 and goes till 1. Let's say, let's say this is like something looks like this. And let's say this is the half value. And this is what my theta naught is. This theta naught is actually half for me. So when theta is less than half, and I compute this probability that beta of theta, what this will give me? This will actually give me type 1 error, right? In this region, because theta is less than half, that is corresponding to the null hypothesis, and I am rejecting the samples. That is my type 1 error. So, in this region, it is giving me type 1 error. Where are, what is this is giving in this region? Now, theta here is greater than half, that means it is coming from alternator hypothesis, but this probability is still that of rejection. Okay. So, what I am basically doing is, I am, theta is now in the complement, in the null hypothesis part, sorry, alternative hypothesis, but I am actually still plotting this only, right, not 1 minus. So, this is actually giving me the complement of the error probability. So, this is like, so in this portion, this is type 1 error, sorry, yeah, in this portion, it is type 1 error and in this portion, it is 1 minus type 2 error, right. Now, we know that this function is increasing in theta. What is the maximum value of type 1 error here is? So, the, the type 1 error is happening here. The maximum value of type 1 error happens when theta is equals to half and that is why we have written maximum type 1 error is half to the power 5 that is 0 0.0312. Okay, now let us look into the type 2 error, right? So, what is the type 2 error now? What will be its uh, so let us now let us uh, try to actually compute its uh, uh, smallest value. Okay. Now 1 minus this is going to give you 1 minus type 2 error is going to give you or that will be represented by this region. Okay. Now, maybe just if I look into the complement of this, maybe it will go something like this. I am just like a trying to do the complement of this. Right, this is like a, this is basically 1 minus theta to the power 5. Right, what beta 1 theta is anyway, this is defined for every theta and that is theta to the power 5. And since beta 1 of theta is increasing in theta, if when theta becomes largest value 1, then it will take the smallest value that is going to be 0. That means there won't be any type 2 error if theta is already 1, right. But now the smallest value is going to happen for this when theta is going to be half and when I plug half here that is basically this value you will see that you are going to get this is actually we saw that last time this is kind of approximately 0.97. Okay. So, you see that type 1 error is very small that you rejecting a sample which is coming from a hypothesis from a null hypothesis is very small. On the other hand, type 2 is also very high. Right? It may happen that your uh, sample is coming from 
alternate hypothesis but you may end up accepting it more very good amount of time but that's a bad case for us right so one this is happening because we are looking at a very bad test we are asking that when everybody is one that time only i'm going to reject otherwise i'm going to accept it to be uh, null hypothesis so you can relax this test and say that okay instead of all to be one when the majority are one maybe i will reject otherwise i will still accept so in that case we are going to reject only when there are 3 4 or 5 access successes and you can compute the corresponding power function for that to be like this and it so happens that you can also plot this function and this will something turn out to be like this this is for beta 1 and this is for beta 2 so notice that in this region which is giving me the type 1 error beta 1 the test 1 is good because it has a low one here but it was taking hit in the type 2 error on the other hand if you now look into the beta 2 beta 2 has a higher type 1 error compared to sorry this type test 2 has a higher type 1 error compared to test 1 but what about this uh, type 2 error so type 2 error is the complement of this right so since this is large compared to this that type 2 error is going to be lower okay so there is always a trade off it's not that one test is going to give you a small type 1 error it not necessary that it also give you small type 2 error there may be other test which may give you smaller type 2 error but it may end up having a type 1 error so we would always but what you would i what you like ideally you want both type 1 and type 2 error to be small that would be the best case right so but that may not always happen simultaneously reducing them may not be possible so we have to keep that in mind whenever we are designing a test so we discussed this again i think last time we did the computation of this right i am not going to discuss this uh, again when we have this samples coming from a gaussian distribution with parameter theta and sigma square and uh, where theta is unknown but sigma square is known we can come up with our rejection region through this condition okay i hope all of you followed the derivation of the last time this is for a given c c is something parameter that has been given to you now i can define now i know my rejection region I can define my power function for a given theta. So the power function at point theta is simply probability that this ratio is going to be larger than C. That is coming from. Everybody agree till this point? Basically, we know that probability of theta is probability that my x belongs to the rejection region and this rejection region is captured by this that is why the power now i can do a simple manipulation here right uh, what i can do is on this left side i simply add theta and minus theta and i return one theta here and the remaining uh, theta minus theta not minus theta I move to the other side okay why I have to do this now if you notice that so by the way this probability under the parameter theta right that's the definition said us okay now what is this quantity now x bar now all these samples here 
are coming from PDF with parameter what? So, the samples that I am going to deal with here when I am computing this probability they are coming with the PDF with parameter theta that is the meaning of this notation right. Now, so what will be the expectation of x bar? It is going to be theta right what is x bar sample mean and I am normal so that basically how centralized and uh, sigma by square root of n I have normalized it. So, what this random variable is going to be? So, we have seen this much before also right this is going to be a normal distribution and that is why I have represented it by z where z is a normal distribution or Gaussian with parameter 0 1 and that being larger than this right and I know how to compute this probability for a given c theta naught theta sigma and the square root n I know how to compute this probability. Any questions so far on this computations? Now, I said in the last example both type 1 error, type 2 error simultaneously you cannot play because if you try to reduce one other may increase. So, often we may be specified some value. I want this much of type 1 error and this much of type 2 error. Okay. How to guarantee that then? Okay. Now, recall that your power function depends on multiple factors. One is the C that you are going to use in your test right what is the threshold you are going to use in your likelihood ratio test and also how many samples that you are going to use in performing this test okay and of course what is the threshold you are using to define your defining your null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis and theta is of course your param input parameter in this function. So, if I am going to change this c and n obviously, my power function value is going to change which is in turn is going to change your type 1 and type 2 error right. So, somehow if somebody asks you okay I want this much of type 1 error and type 2 error then how is it possible for you to give him that kind of type 1 and type 2 error? So, what is in control? What is in your control here to through what you can control or change your uh, type 1 and type 2 error here? See, okay, if you change C, your type 1 and type 2 error will change, maybe that is one thing you have in your control. And n number of samples that is another thing which in your control by playing with it, you can again control type 1 and type. Okay, now. If somebody is asking you, okay, I want this much of type 1 and type error, maybe then you can see what is that C and N that can give you that much, that kind of a type 1 and type 2 error, okay. Let us look into that. Suppose somebody asks you, see, I want type 1 error to be at most 0.1, okay, and also type 2 error to be at most 0 0.2 when my theta is going to be greater than theta naught plus sigma when this is some condition you will see why this is coming. Then somebody is asking you already I want this much of type 1 error and this much of type 2 error. So, the only thing that you have in your control is C and N. Now, you need to decide what C I have to use what N I have to use so that I can guarantee this. Okay, let us try to see how can I choose my C and N. Okay, so let us get started with this power function we have. This I hope from the previous slide it is all clear to you. Now let us see this is a let us try to look into this. 
a little more carefully as a function of theta. So, recall z is a standard normal distribution. If I let theta here, this theta go to plus infinity, what will be this probability value? Everybody uh, see agree? 1, are you sure? Okay. So, as theta goes to minus infinity, this entire quantity becomes infinity, minus infinity, right, basically. And it does not matter what is the value of C, because this guy dominates this C, irrespective of what is this, this guy is going to be minus infinity. And we know that probability Z is greater than minus infinity is 1. On the other hand, what is the value if I let theta go to minus infinity? It is going to be 0. Everybody agree? So, as I go from minus infinity to plus infinity, am I going from 0 to 1 in a linear fashion or like in an increasing fashion? Yes? Okay. So, if I put this theta, so as theta goes to infinity, this is going to be 1 and uh, as theta is minus infinity, this is like something like this as a function of theta. Notice that this is not a CDF function. I am plotting it as a function of theta now. Okay, and this is like 1. Now, based on this understanding, can we now decide what should be the value of C, C and N? See, first it is saying, first one is type 1 error to be at most 0.1. So, the maximum value of the type 1 error should be 0 0.1. Now, can you tell me what is the maximum value of type 1 error here? And notice that theta, this is my theta and here it is below this it is type 1 and uh, above this, this is 1 minus type 2 error, right? Now, what will be the maximum value of type 1 so this is where my type 1 error is and this type 1 error is happening at equals to this right so my maximum value of type 1 error is actually at beta equals to theta. What is this value? Probability that z is greater than or equals to c and which you have been told you to be set to what value? 0 0.1. Now, from this, can you find out what is the value of C? How is that? So, you know that Z has to be greater than or equal to C is 0.1. You know exactly at what point your standard normal is going to take value 0.1. Like at what point if it exceeds, it will take value of 0.1. You can find that. So, you find out now value of C. So, this will give you have so far figured out C. Is there something else you need to figure out? N also you need to figure out how to do that N now. So, for that let us use the second condition that your type 2 error has to be at most 0.2. So, I said type 2 error is like a complement of this, it can be like a something like a just complement of this right, when theta is going to be greater than equals to theta su. Now, this quantity has to be 
at most 0.2 when theta is going to be larger than theta plus. Now, if I look into the type 2 error, is type 2 error is going to be increasing or decreasing function in theta? So, type 2 error is now going to follow from 1 minus beta theta, right? And we know that if beta theta, beta of theta is increasing, 1 minus beta of theta has to decrease. And its uh, maximum value happens when theta equals to theta naught. But we have been told that when theta is greater than theta naught plus sigma, that time this value should be at most 0 0.2. So, you just plug in theta equals to theta naught plus sigma, you will get. So, what you want is, I want this quantity at theta to be at theta naught plus sigma to be 0 0.2. And now, let us see, what is beta of theta plus sigma if you plug in? If you plug in here, this is like a theta, right? This will knock off this theta. I will get minus sigma that will cancel with this. So, I will get probability that z is greater than or equals to c minus square root n to be do I get this condition? or maybe let me write this like properly. Now, p minus z is greater than or equals to c minus square root n equals to 0 0.2 and c you have already decided from this. So, plug in that c and now what is remaining is only n is the quantity that is remaining and again by using your tail Distribute properties of your CDF fung uh, like yeah, uh, CDF of your standard normal distribution, you should be able to find out what is n. Okay. So, if somebody has to ask you to control the control your type 1 and type 2 error, the thing that is in your control is what is the C value you can choose and how many samples that you want to guarantee that type 1 and type 2 errors. Okay? So, if you fix a number of sample, maybe it is almost not possible or almost impossible to make both type 1 and type 2 errors to be small. Okay? That is why often in practice what we do is, we say that let us my primary criteria is going to be on type 1 error. Let us guarantee that type 1 error is always going to be less than this much. And after that, see that what is the smallest type 2 error you can get. Okay? So, in a way, if you want to look this into the from the optimization point of view, what you want to do is you have been asked to give type 1 error to be let us say some quantity. Let us call let us call that to be alpha. And now what you want to do is minimize your type 2 error. So, you want to find a test. So, this is across all tests. So, for every test is going to be associated with type 1 and type 2 error. And you have been already told, okay, type 2 error can't be, that is my hard constraint. Type 1 error can't be more than alpha. If you satisfy, that is good. But I will be also more happy if you make my type 2 error also small. Okay.